Hello, this is Mark McDaniel with the Evolution of Warfare podcast. I uh, I've had a lot of frustration with my screen recording software. I have I did a 45 minute introductory video to this game yesterday. It didn't it didn't load up. So I'm going to redo this um, and kind of introduce this. I, I had it was a nice surprise. Um, Decision Games, of course, publishes Strategy and Tactics and Modern War and, uh, oh, there's another one. But uh, Modern War just ended, and it finished with the final volume in the Seven Days to the Rhine series that you see here. Uh, this is volume one. <clears throat> uh, I had purchased all the magazine games. There, a lot of them are out of print. You can't, you know, they're hard to find. And I was frustrated. Um... I'm not really frustrated. I was sad for other people that were interested in this game. I took all of this, I had it punched and clipped and all that, uh, and I set up this monster game. Um, there's five maps, five volumes to this game. Um, Objective Nuremberg is the first, but at Constant World 21, this, this last year, earlier this year, I uh, uh, set it up on five tables, I think, four or five. Um, pretty big real estate to, with all the counter, you know, having the trays and everything there, uh, counter trays. And I love the game though. It really had a, a really blast. I met the designer, um, which was really a neat deal. And on Facebook, I, uh, I think it was, this, you know, uh, one of the Facebook pay, uh, groups, I, I did live streaming a kind of a summary of each turn, what was, what was happening. Um, and videoed that. It was a lot of fun to do that. And I had only allotted, I think, two days for the game. And I think I could have, uh, I probably could have gone a third. Um, I realized yesterday that I, I uh, wasn't doing one rule correctly. So uh, I wanted to just introduce this Vassal module to you on the Decision Game website. All five of these volumes are found there. Um, they're unique modules. They've got some a different way of, of, of uh, displaying things, and so for those that are interested in playing the Vassal module, um, you can learn from my experience of hunting and pecking around, <clears throat> and I'll show that to you. But um, the rules and uh, the game itself is found on, uh, uh, you, can, you can get it at the Decision Games website. I know they're going to be doing a, 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 a deluxe box version um, of all five, um, and uh, that should look really nice. I've got a, a pretty nice one. I'm gonna. I'm hope next year in 2022 uh, to uh, host, um, kind of referee um, a game, or if I need to fill in. But uh, of all five maps, again, uh, again, monster game, um, and uh, again, it's a very fast playing game. I enjoy it. I'm gonna be introducing the rule, a lot of the rules as we go along, um, but. Uh, uh, this is, you know, kind of my next endeavor. Um, again, like I, I said, I've been having problems with my recording, screen recording software, uh, Loom. Um, for some reason, I did a playthrough of, of a distant plane twice, and uh, it messed, it didn't capture. And then my problem yesterday, hopefully we won't have that problem today. I'm going to try to keep this video to 35 to 40 minutes. Uh, hopefully I can do better. I was kind of rambling quite a bit like I'm doing now yesterday, <clears throat> but let's, uh, let's go ahead and go through, um, I'm going to move these rules off to, the, to the, my other monitor, maybe. Um, and also I think my computer doesn't have the uh, right amount of RAM for all of this. Um, I think Vassal takes up quite a bit of memory and, uh, so does Adobe, but at any rate, let's just, I can get this over. There we go. So this is, uh, well, you can see here, this is the map of, uh, on Vassal, a pretty big map. It's a two foot by three foot map. So we're looking at 10 feet by 15 feet is the space. And the Frankfurt map, the, the objective Frankfurt map is offset and they, uh, link up around here up at the top, you know, they overlap each other. And so that's how you place the maps in, in sequence. Um, one of the other problems too is the way that the, uh, you, you can barely see, um, whoops, 
or zoom in a little bit, see a little bit of the detail on the map and the counters, because they're really good looking counters. I like the system, uh, Ty Bomba, I think designed it or, or, or developed it. And then, um, like I said, I met the, a designer uh, of the game at Constant World and uh, he did the map and everything. And so, and the counters, those beautiful artwork. I, I like this, but the, on the actual map itself, these hex numbers are difficult to read. And the hex numbers reset, or they each map, they're not a sequential across all five. They're, and so um, uh, that's, uh, you know, neither here nor there, but at any rate, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play this in all five maps. I'm gonna do it sequentially, uh, starting with volume one and working through volume five. And kind of how I'll score it is best of five, uh, three out of five of the. Uh, whoever wins three of the five, which side, uh, the Warsaw Pact or the NATO forces, whoever does that will be declared the winner. Um, again, this is Seven Days to the Rhine. Uh, so the this is a 1980s era hypothetical uh, invasion of West Germany by the Warsaw Pact. Uh, back, I was stationed in Germany during uh, the 1980s and uh, I, I know I, I was very interested in, in, and was aware of what was going on in the world. <clears throat> we exercised against uh, a Soviet attack, a uh, Warsaw Pact attack. Um, at, I was at Zweibrücken Air Base on the French border with Germany, and a very beautiful assignment. Um, I was augmented out to be a security forces person, so I would sit almost once a quarter for a week out at a post on the fence line. Uh, DS X-ray nine was the name of the post. I remember it all kinds of weather and my chemical suit waiting for the attack. Well, um, this, this game, I think what interested me in it was it connected to that time. Um, and so it, it brought back some, some memories. So, um, let me zoom back out on this and, uh, kind of show you the, the lay of the land. So this is on the east, on the right hand side of the map, the Eastern side of the map is East Germany, and then down here below is Czechoslovakia. Um, in this particular volume, you have on the on the Warsaw Pact side, you have uh, Soviets up here at the top, uh, the East Germans, um, I'll leave that there so I can show you, uh, the counters, and then uh, the Czechoslovakians down here at the south. Defending, of course, West Germany, which is the majority of the map, um, the Rhine River, um, is off to the west or to the left of this map, not very far from here. And so it's the, uh, it runs the entire course of West Germany, which is the objective. Right? And this particular map is Nuremberg, and it's called this Objective Nuremberg because uh, the route to, uh, and we'll talk about objectives here in a minute, but these Autobahns are the main you know, uh, transportation routes. Um, and we'll talk about movement points, but uh, when you're traveling on the Autobahn, uh, you can go a significant distance, <clears throat> um, and and it, it moves a, a very it's a rapid moving game. And so, we'll talk about kind of my strategy. What I'm going to do, I'm playing both sides, of course. Um, in this particular, there are, are uh, random uh, mission, you know, uh, objectives for the Soviets that are normally hidden. Of course, I'm playing myself, so uh, I know what they are. But it, it pretty much is going to uh, resolve it. So this is going to, NATO is going to respond to, you know, Warsaw Pact, obviously, anyway. So, but I have to, in this particular uh, case, I have to get 12 count, 12 units um, out of, uh, through these uh, uh, Soviet Union objective uh, spaces. So I've got to transit 12 units out anywhere along any of these uh uh, one, two, three, four, five spaces. Um, and then uh, I can, I've, it's 10 to 12, and I'll talk about that on the force disposition in a moment. Um, the map is pretty simple and straightforward. There's the towns, the rivers, you know, major geological features. Um, and these are mountainous terrain here, um, which so obviously, if, if this is the juncture, this, this hex right here, um, right here that I'm, I'm highlighting, that particular juncture is the focal point for this entire, uh, this particular objective. And so obviously the uh, NATO forces are gonna probably use 
the river and this mountainous or hilly terrain here to set up its defensive perimeter. And so I do think though here, the West German forces here are gonna to try to stop this further east, uh, but my fort, I don't have a lot of forces over here, uh, American, but I've got them all up over here. And so I think what we're gonna do is set up uh, this, you know, the juncture here gets the quickest point. Um, otherwise it will take um, the East Germans and the, and the Soviets a long time to get over here. They're gonna wind up coming back down here um, because they've gotta to, got to reach these exit points here. So that's kind of the objective of this game. Each map has its own set of objectives and uh, they all contribute and connect with each other. Um, so what I wanna do is just kind of run through some specific rules. A lot of the rules I'm gonna go through as, as I uh, work through things. We'll cover uh, major rules and then um, as we go along, when we deal with combat and movement, some of that specific stuff, We'll refer back and, uh, and and do a little bit more explanation, at least in the initial terms. Um, I'm using the rule set from Objective Hamburg, which is the fifth volume. It was also the last ep the last edition of Modern War, um, ep uh, edition 55, because it's the most recent uh, rules of the game. Um, and then in each uh, these again were magazine games, so in each magazine there was also uh, in the rule sets. Are there are these specific rules for each uh, each uh, object. <clears throat> so I will go over those specific rules in this introduction as we move a little bit closer. Uh, so just kind of covering some basic stuff. Uh, the scale of this map, uh, each of these hexes uh, is 2.5 miles in, in uh, width. Um, and the unit level is at the battalion level. Um, so let me... Uh, Scroll in here a little bit. You can see this is a, the Americans, and it's the first armor division. Um, this, uh, um, in fact, let me go to, uh, so I can describe what's on these units. So here, the top is, uh, this is the unit identification number, uh, the first of the 54th out of the first armor division, uh, the first of the 52nd, the third of the 35th. Um, all of that is, is, is on the counter. Then the NATO symbol will show you, you know, the country is the color and the U.S. And then um, these numbers are the attack and defense value. If you flip over the unit, um, you'll see uh, this is what I really liked about this game was that it had the hex locations and when what term you, you did things. Um, sorry, I'll get that. A little bit later. Um, so here, this 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 unit is Stark, and it's hex 3426, which is this hex right here. But 3426, I have to be within one hex of 3426, and so I'm going to defend this airfield and Bamberg um, with this, this these units here. That's kind of what their position, uh, relativity, uh, relative to what they're probably were there for. Um, they don't have flip on the, in the menu when you in Vassal when you right click. Um, it's switch movement mode. I don't know what that means. Somebody thought that there's a reason for that. I'm sure who designed the Vassal mod, but that took me a while to find out because I was like, oh, where's the where's the placement stuff? Um, so let me uh, back up. So this is 2.5 miles across. These are battalions. Um, we covered uh, the the units themselves or the unit counters. Um, let me see. Oh, there was something. Um, okay. First Italian, uh, the 52nd Regiment of the 1st Armored Division. That's kind of how these uh, unit identifications, same thing for the Warsaw Pact uh, units themselves. Um, let's move back out here and show you the whole structure. And I'll, I'll talk about placement in a bit. Um, The movement rates is very simple. Um, recon class, which is these units here, um, this type of unit, has nine movement factors. Um, all others are a simple six. Um, and the terrain, of course, modifies it. The, 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 the Audubon is half a movement point. So uh, six 
um, is going to turn into is going to turn into 12 um, because if you're moving along uh, moving along the autobahn, you move at a pretty pretty decent clip in that. Um, let's see uh, reinforcements. You can see over here I've got turn one. There's not a lot in here. Other the other maps there's a lot of reinforcements for each turn, but um, uh, again, the U.S. gets uh, the third armored division, um, four units on turn six. They also get some garrison units. These units are on the first turn. Um, all of the Warsaw Pact for this map comes in on the first turn. So this is the first uh, thing that happens. Um, again, just to show you some of these, what these other counters represent. This is the turn counter right here. Um, this is the air 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 superiority. So right now it's it's uh, Warsaw Pact on the first turn. Um, and we'll talk about that in the, when we go into the second turn. Um, this is the North Pincer is the strategy. This is what these objectives are marked over here on the, the side. Um, and then there are refugees that happen. Uh, I roll basically as the Warsaw Pact player and uh, one dice one d six, and then I put that many markers out for that turn. Um, Anyway, I think that's that's all of that. Um, a lot of these units here, like this, uh, these four are stacked outside of the map. They're all going to come in on this Audubon uh, road right here. All right. So again, we'll cover some more of this stuff as we go along. Um, we'll cover sequence of play as we move along. But it's basically the, the core aspect. Um, there's an air superiority phase which is already dictated for the first turn. Electronic warfare doesn't happen until turn two, and uh, we'll cover that when we do that, and, and how they relate to movement and combat. Basically, uh, air units, combat support, all our dice roll modifiers, um, which relate to the, the, the uh, conflict or the, the, the combat losses and that type of thing. Then there are, are two turns. The Warsaw Pack player gets to go first each turn. Um, so they can declare to move and fire or fire and move. And we'll cover this when we get into the first movement. I'm not going to delve into a lot of it, but that's the heart of things. Um, there are benefits for choosing to move first or to fire first. Um, we'll go over that later. And then there's an, an administrative phase, which uh, deals with uh, victory conditions and removal of markers, that type of thing. So it's a very simple, um, very, very simple uh, uh, sequence of play that once you learn it, you go, you go through it pretty fast. Um, oh yeah. So for example, a fight, move, prepared combat bonus during any game turn, in which a player declares a combat phase followed by a move phase. So fire, then move all his attacks and defenses are considered prepared. And so it's just a dice roll modifier that happens. Um, there are again, seven days, but there are, let's see. Um, actually there are one day, two days, three, days. there's four days that are represented, um, and a night turn. So two day turns and a night turn that happen, uh, every, every day, but it's broken up into 12 turns. Um, let's see, we'll talk about combat support later. I'm just moving in through the rules, um, helicopters, air superiority, um, we'll cover that a little bit later, electronic warfare. Stacking. Um, Warsaw Pack can only stack, uh, these units over here can only uh, stack two per hex. NATO is allowed to do three. Um, so, um, and with NATO, it's at the, you stack at the end of the phase. So units may move through one another or temporarily overstack, so long as at the end that they don't. Uh, you don't have more than three. Um, so um, again, also you can't can't uh, put different divisions. So that's these the, the color on the top of these. This is uh, the first armored division is this like orange kind of color or peach or whatever it is. They can only stack with each other. Um, I can't stack with these blue um, from the second. Uh, these are reconnaissance. This is a reconnaissance unit. They're different divi divisions, and so I can't stack them together. And then um, different nationalities, so I can't stack with the uh, these e these West German units. But these, 
I can stack with these garrison units over here. Um, so just we'll cover that when we go a little bit later. Uh, Helleborn units. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> I'll talk about that later. So then uh, we'll talk about zone of control. When we, uh, there, that's a big part of this. Um, reinforcements, we'll cover that a little bit later. Movement, um, we'll talk about when we go through train and all that business. Uh, we'll deal with refugees on turn three. We'll deal with combat when we have our first combat. And then um, there's combat. And then that's pretty much the rules. So um, 12 pages of rules probably are the standard rule set. And then there's four. So I'm going to bring over Objective Nuremberg again. And I'm going to walk through the, the remaining part of this. I'm at 21 minutes. Uh, I'm gonna uh, then I'm gonna talk about my strategy, kind of what I'm deciding to do, and and then uh, we'll end the video, and then we'll start with the first turn. Um, so let me go back here and uh, work through this. Hold on, Zach. Let's get down here to page. Then we're gonna walk. I'll show you these specific rules. So these are exclusive rules. Um, We've already covered that introductory information. Um, and we talked about setup already. Combat support markers. So let me let me go through that next. Hold on for a second. Um, the mark uh, in vast. This is another thing that I, it took me a while to figure out. If I go here to units and I go to the West German support, for example. There are uh, these attack helicopter and then artillery. And so how I send to game turn, um, like game turn two, I'll get a number of sub combat support counters. And we'll cover this when we go through. Same thing with attack helicopters. Um, and then the other things that are added are the air and electronic warfare. So there are up to four different types of combat support. And um, we'll cover all that when we, we go through things. But that was just something um, you just uh, send a game turn two, um, game turn three. There, you know, an F uh, function that you can actually do to to automate that for um, each side as you're as you're dealing with the side. Um, that's a, that can be a little confusing because in the actual physical game you only get a certain number per turn and then they're cumulative. But we'll cover all that a little bit later. But it, Kind of talk a little bit about that um, in relation to um, what they're talking about combat. So port markers, because you, you, if you don't know the game, then you haven't seen it. Um, we've already set things up again um, with the backs of, back of the counters. There's no reduced counter or step reductions. Um, it's not, you know, if you get eliminated, you get eliminated. Um, we've already done setup. Um, and then we've we've talked about the again. There's a cup that you pull, which is kind of neat. You pull the different uh, strategies from. I know in the joint game, which we will do, I think turn seven, you re-roll, you redraw, and your strategies may change. That's going to be kind of a cool deal. Um, this gives you information on how Warsaw Pact enters the game. And then there's this uh, 103rd Guards Parachute Division. That's an eight strength, which is pretty impressive um, and very helpful. Uh, how I'm going to handle that, this is something and, and a little bit about the, the unique aspect of this. Um, you have to begin at the beginning of the game, you have to determine when and what game turn the unit may arrive. Now, any kind of paratroop or um, heliborn unit um, uh, movement, uh, you have to have air superiority. So this, the counter, if, if the Warsaw Pact does not have Air superiority, when this counter comes into play, it has to wait until the, until the next turn that, that there is Soviet air superiority. Um, I could withhold this or cancel this deployment, um, and I would get to, um, to you know, my, my objective would reduce from 12 to 10 counters to get through those objectives. Um, and you also do an alternate, so um, they're given these orders and you can't change it. I think that's a little weird but um, what I'm probably going to do is uh, land them 
make a decision about whether or not I'm going to withhold or lend based on how I'm doing as the Warsaw Pact, but to support this uh, uh, incursion in, around Nuremberg. So I may hold off until and just kind of work that way. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't quite understand the rationale um, of they don't really talk about why you have to be very specific um, and they're static. You can't adjust them, which, you know, they had radios. I think they could have said, hey, you know, come a little bit later, come a little bit earlier. At any rate, so that's that unique counter that's there. Um, um, let's see. At game turn one special rules, all Soviet attacks receive a plus one. DRM bonus, um, all NATO attacks are suffer a minus one. Uh, the Air Warsaw plaque player has automatic air superior on turn one. We've already rolled the dice, and let me bring this up here. Um, this little drop-down thing has the air units holding area, the artillery units, uh, staging area, um, and the tables. It's kind of a nice thing. But I uh, basically rolled dice. Let me just show you this. Uh, it's got this cute, nice, nice little box here. Um, and I get, I think I got one. I think I rolled one for the number of air units they get. And we'll show how all that works a little bit later. Um, <clears throat> the pack player has automatic electronic warfare superiority on, on turn one. I've not done this. So I am going to uh, clone this and put this up here. Oh, what? Okay, I just got it flipped. Actually, so I have this is my tracking of who has air, who has these superiorities. So you'll notice here the pack player is automatic. The rolls one die, and that's how many EW markers they're going to get. So I'm going to roll a die, um, and it looks like the number is. Three, so I get three electronic warfare markers. So let me pull those. Those are going to go. Air units holding area, artillery. Hmm. Um. Let me see here. Pull this over. I'm just going to use the air box for this and uh, talk about this a little bit later. Uh, markers. Ah, here we go. Um, get three. One, two. All right. So that is that's something I didn't do yesterday. So I have that now. So now I have, I have three. Uh, electronic warfare markers and one air unit, and we'll cover that on turn one. All right, we're almost at 30 minutes. So I'm gonna eliminate that, or not eliminate it, but move it. Um, all packed units crossing the border hexide during one turn must pay an additional um, one uh, movement point to do so. The player may use column movement. Now column movement allows you to even go further um, I could go up to, I think it's, uh, uh, gosh, well, let me take a look, 10.9. Um, well, well, we'll do that. Um, you know, in other words, when you're up here, and, and I need to remind myself, I just read it yesterday, 10.7. Column movement. Um, Oh, double their movement factor whenever they conduct column movement. So that's, in this case, it's 12. And then if you remember, I said Audubon, you can move it half a movement point. So tw it's 24 hexes. So in this first turn, this guy can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So it looks like in three turns, you had a straight shot. Three or four turns, you could, you could get all the way across the map. Um, of course, they're going to run into this. And I didn't know this. When I played at Consum World, I, I, I used the regular uh, non-column movement. So they'll probably start in column movement. 
and, uh, and move out that way. But that was something I learned um, when, yesterday when I was looking at these rules. So let's see. Um, okay. Uh, column movement. Um, we've talked about reinforcements. Um, uh, NATO reinforcements. So again, there are these, uh, whoops, the home guard, uh, these can go, they do not, uh, affect stacking. Um, and there's this uh, 26th Luf Luflande Brigade, which is a paratroop unit. Um, where are they at in here? Let me see. Where are those guys at? I think. Um, let me do. Let me check. This is something that I was I was thinking about yesterday. I'm sorry. Um, oh, here we go. That's these guys. So um, there's a question mark. So I've got to put these. Oh, I have them down here. I already had them. Okay, I remember. I did do this on center. So let me get this back up here. Um, I have them right here off the map. Um, There we go. So you can see I've got those three units. They're question marked on the back. And so um, I can do them any turn, but I have to have air superiority. And I, they would they land at any airfield hex in West Germany that's not controlled. And so I can move them. Um, I'm trying to see the furthest east. I could probably drop them in Nuremberg. That may be where I'll drop them or up here in, um, you know, anywhere really along here. So these guys will come into the game, probably get dropped here, um, and uh, be able to get into the fight pretty quick. So that's that paratrooper. But I have to have air superiority, and I don't have it on turn one. Um, and I talked about victory conditions. All right, so that is the specific roles. Each of these have, uh, each map has them. And so, um, again, we're going to play them one by one and then connect them. So let me talk about my decision on setup and what I'm deciding to do. Um, so the Warsaw Pact player, first of all, you'll notice up here in East Germany, you've got the Soviets, they'll come in last. Um, you have um, these uh, East German units. They're going to move down this high, uh, Audubon and, um, and try to get up to uh, whatever, whichever one would be free. we got to get, again, we have to get 10 to 12 units, depending on what we decide to do with this uh, paratroop unit here, although it's an eight strength, which is really good. You can see um, they go up to 12 on attack and defense strength. Um, and my, my phone at the office is working here. Hold on for one second. I'm gonna pause for a moment. All right, we're back. Yeah, it was just a scam caller. Um, sorry about that. I'll never get called unless I'm doing something like this. <laughs> Very professional. So um, the Czechoslovakian units down here are going to basically move west, and uh, probably the first turn we're going to have combat on the first turn. Um, I'm probably going to keep these units here. These West German units are going to defend West Germany. I'm going to use all my other... Now my clock is going to go off. So you're going to hear 11 dings. I'm very sorry about that. I'm going to pause it so you don't have to listen to that, and I'll get back. Okay, that's 11 a.m. All right, um, so... All of these units here in the reinforcements, I think we've got these American units, um, the 3rd Armored Division that will come in. They're all going to, again, try to, I'm going to set up an initial defense perimeter um, using these spaces here because uh, we have zone control that we talked about. And I need to uh, probably use a secondary defense perimeter. These units all up here are going to come down and kind of set up and guard against their movement here. Um, to defend these Audubon. So I'll use my my air power, uh, air superiority, anything I have there probably to slow down. And we'll talk about what these air, air superiority and electronic warfare uh, units do uh, when we get into the first turn. So that's my strategy. Um, again, each, op each operation, um, it has some different things. Um, it's a great game. It's a very fast moving game and uh, very simple rules overall compared to some. 
a lot of dice roll modifiers, so we'll have to keep track of those. Um, and uh, we'll figure out a way to do that. Um, the Hamburg map has a huge city on it. This is the fifth volume. And when I played it, it uh, the objective for the Warsaw Pact was to capture Hamburg. And so everything was all, it was all urban fighting and it was just brutal. And so it, it got pretty dramatic. I mean, I, I immersed myself in this game. I imagined I was the uh, combatant commander over the theater, um, which is absent. And, you know, I'm getting briefings every day and I'm, I'm, you know, you get this huge invasion. When you have them all, all five maps out, it really is an intimidating assault. Um, and you're caught by a relative surprise. Um, and I know, at, I think I had, I, it was rare for me to get uh, NATO air superiority, which, you know, was a challenge. But um, at any rate, uh, that's kind of, uh, you know, the, the game flow itself. Um, it's a magazine game, and so um, what makes it a monster game is the four other maps when you add them in. But I'm going to do these one by one and, um, and record these episodes. And so I can put them on BGG um, to show people play through and set up and that type of thing and how to use the Vassal module. Um, which again is a very, whoever designed it did a great job and uh, I'm just glad that they're there. The problem with having the big maps, like, like I said, I spent two days, I set up, I think it took an evening to set up all five maps, several hours to get everything set up. Um, and I played for two days and I had to take it down. And if I had known that these modules were here, I could have continued my game. I wanted to keep playing. But I had another game that I wanted to play, um, or maybe it was time to go. I think um, I think this was this may have been the last game that I put out, um, and I loved it and I wanted to continue playing. But I, I had other things I wanted to do in the you know it's, yeah it's seven day convention, so that breaks down to okay I, I can do three games, um, and some of these games take longer than two days, um, and especially when you're learning them like I have. But anyway, I hope this will be an enjoyable thing for you. Um, this is an introduction to the Ascent Seven Days to the Rhine series. I'll probably, I'm, I'm hoping that this video will get posted on each, on BGG, each of the uh, volumes. And uh, at any rate, thank you all so much. And uh, please go to my YouTube channel, Evolution of Warfare, like and subscribe. I've got two other games that I've played through. Um, one of them is um, uh, the Avalon Hill uh, classic Civil War from 1956 or something like that. And then I have a digital playthrough of Labyrinth that um, I had a lot of fun playing. I did have a distant plane, but again, I had problems. I, and I did that on Tabletop Simulator. Absolutely loved it. And I may redo that again in the future. But I want, this is, this is one of my favorite games. This um, uh, Seven Days to the Rhine series out of Modern War Magazine. Um, but we are right at 40 minutes. I'm going to try to keep these limited. Thank you so much, and we will see you on the flip side.